thank you, children. <laughs> How about that for a show opening, though, huh? Let's hear it for the kids from Momentum and Ballet Med Academy. Outstanding. And your queen. Well, thank you. You don't think I got all spanked up for nothing, right? And I mean spanks like the undergarment, not spanks like some kind of sex thing. Anyway, and how about a big hand for the ladies of Longford? Are you still over there, ladies? The ladies of Longford? We'll hear more from them later on. And we do have Ballet Met's artistic director, Edward Liang, to thank for the choreography on that fabulous opening. Another round of applause for Edward and all his hard work. So, good afternoon, my loyal subjects. Welcome to the 2019 Community Arts Partnership Awards Lunch, and I am, for those of you who have been living in a cave, for the last several years, Angela Pace, once again gracing you with my queenly presence and presiding over this afternoon's festivities. I love this event. I do have to admit that I always thought that I should have had a cameo in Mad Men. What do you think? I mean, the martinis and the cigarettes alone, that would have done it for me. But of course, that was way before my time. One way or another, though, the queen always gets what she wants, and so I was able to sneak in that little special appearance in the Mad Men Open. Now, you may not know this, but RJD2, and I always want to call him C3PO, but RJD2, the musician and the composer of the Mad Men theme, he's a Columbus native. Who knew that? He's a Columbus native. Yep, you can applaud that. And he moved back here to town just a few years ago to be with his family. And of course, we did invite him to be with us here today um, because we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that he was one of our featured artists in our Arts Makes Columbus campaign. But right now, he is touring, so he could not be with us. But he was very excited to create that little musical mashup that opened up our show just for our awards. Now, many of you have seen me in some fairly outrageous costumes over the year. If you've been here once or twice, you've seen me as a mermaid, and you've seen me as the, I almost said side piece, but that's not appropriate, the girlfriend of the beast. And I believe one year they put me in a box and tried to saw me in half. I can't remember. But this year, it is just a John Hamm parody, just me and my crown and my martini glass, and this beautiful silk top and jewelry that was created by local designer Vazi Douglas. And I know Vazi's in here somewhere, but yeah, there she is right there. But this is Vazi, y'all. This is Vazi. Vazi, you have made me feel like the queen of Technicolor up here, so thank you very much. Now, you can also see Vazi and other designers who are helping us to bring our theme to life, the theme of this year's event, which is the cultural fabric of Columbus. The cultural fabric of us is highlighted through the gorgeous creations of designers like Vazi, Larissa Boivka, Kelly Martin, and Celeste Malvar Stewart. If you, yes, you can applaud the ladies. And if you didn't see them on your way in, make sure that you take a look at the beautiful designs on the mannequins that are in the lobby just outside on the left. They are scrumptious. And about, ooh, 40 pounds ago, I could have worn every single one of them. For those of you who have attended this event in the past, you know that we like to kind of mix it up a little bit, but we like to keep things moving because we've got so much going on. So please continue to enjoy your lunches, but as always, the queen insists on quiet chewing. It's a problem for some of you, not all of you, but some of you. Minimal silverware clanging and limited chatter would be a really appreciate it so that we can properly celebrate each and every one of you and everything that you do to make the arts wonderful here in the city of Columbus. We must first thank the sponsors who made today possible. We just could not do this without all of you. So thanks to our presenting sponsor, as always, PNC, 
Our Columbus Makes Excellence Award sponsors NG and L Brands Foundation, supporting sponsor Big Lots, our media sponsors City Scene Magazine and WOSU Public Media, and all our patron and table sponsors. Applause for our sponsors, please. Now, this event was created by the Arts Council back in 1984, and today we are celebrating our 36th anniversary. Oh, everybody's just in applause mode today. I'm loving this. As has been our tradition, the centerpieces on your tables were created by students at five local settlement houses in the Ohio Alliance for the Arts Education's Art in the House program that is a mouthful, but definitely a great program that helps our babies to learn to appreciate art. So Central Community House, Gladden Community House, St. Stephen's Community Center, Clinton Heights Lutheran Church, and Lincoln Park Elementary, those are the houses, the organizations that are responsible for the centerpieces on your tables. The Young Artist Participation was led by longtime Art in the House teaching artist, the amazing Queen Brooks, the equally amazing Richard Duart Brown. What? Okay. Equally amazing Wendy Kendrick, Gay Riesland, and April Tsunami. They helped our babies to create the centerpieces here. And the fun part is that if you like your table centerpiece, we encourage you to take it with you after the lunch, but no fighting over the centerpieces, okay? Now, a civilized duel, maybe, but no fighting over the centerpieces. Just do rock, paper, scissors or something and decide who is going to get to take one home. The proceeds from today's event support the Alliance's important community arts education programs, which include Artists in the Schools, Franklin County Neighborhood Arts Grants, and Transit Arts, program of the Central Community House and the stars of one of our performances today. While the Alliance is a statewide organization, their Columbus arts education efforts would not be possible without very generous support from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, the Ohio Arts Council, GCAC, of course, the Puffin West Foundation, and many individual supporters. So thank you all very much for what you do to help the Ohio Arts Alliance. We are about to launch into a whole bunch of fun, y'all, and not a small amount of inspiration, I might add. So I encourage you to take photos, to tweet, to Facebook, to Instagram, TikTok, Pop-Tart, you know, all that stuff that I really don't understand, but I don't have to because I have all of you to take care of that for me. So thank you very much. Our event hashtag is, let me make sure I get this right, GCAC Awards, but we always encourage you to use hashtag Art Makes Columbus too. That's the first time I've been able to say hashtag twice without slipping into hash brown mode. So I'm learning, I'm learning. It is now my distinct and regal pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council. And aside from today's recipient of the Michael B. Coleman Arts Partner Award, I don't think that there is a single person in this room today who has done more to elevate the arts in Columbus. I don't think there's anybody in this room or in this city who attends more arts events than this individual. And as his queen, I'm going to have to uh, demand that he let me know how he is able to be in so many places at the same time. Now, there is a dirty rumor going around that there is some cloning involved, but I don't think that Tom or Mary would allow that. But he has made my tenure on the GCAC board a true joy. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm welcome for the nicest guy in Columbus, Tom Katzenmeyer. <laughs> no. It's not a real martini, Tom. I asked her if it was a real martini. It's not That's a real martini. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Because <laughs> they did not give me one. Uh, thank you, Angela. It truly is my favorite day of the year, celebrating our arts and business partners and all the incredible creative talent in our community. Today's theme is a reflection of the Arts Council's new mission, adopted earlier this year by our board, to support and advance the cultural fabric of Columbus 
and we've had a lot of fun weaving fabric, literally and figuratively, throughout the program. We have so much to be thankful for this year. I could literally stand up here and say thank you repeatedly through the entire luncheon, honestly, and I still wouldn't feel it's enough. So let me just say thank you to our arts organizations and artists who stood by us through our advocacy efforts. Thank you to our elected officials, civic leaders, and community partners who believed and invested in us. And thank you to our business and individual patrons and sponsors who support us every day. We have so many wonderful award winners and performances to get to today. I'm going to keep my remarks brief by sharing with you just a few notable accomplishments and upcoming important events. Today, we've incorporated a number of our Art Makes Columbus featured artists into our live program. We're grateful to them for lending their talents to our show today and to our effort to elevate the arts and artists in Columbus year round. This collaborative marketing effort will celebrate its fifth year next June, but it definitely won't be its last. We, we know that the commitment to sustaining Art Makes Columbus over these past five years has changed the landscape of our creative sector. The campaign continues to grow in size and scope. In fact, this year we added a searchable public art database to columbusmakesart.com to help everyone discover the wonderful public art in the neighborhoods across the city. More importantly, arts organizations are having some of their best seasons ever and setting attendance records. And what I love most, more of our artists are being recognized nationally. The campaign just won its third Emmy, thanks to the excellent production work of WOSU. Yes, WOSU. <laughs> Jeff Smith's Bone series just got picked up by Netflix. Bobby Floyd has been performing at jazz festivals around the country, and this year is being recognized with the Ray Hanley Award that's actually being awarded to him next Thursday. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate Andrew Levitt, AKA Nina West, for her Miss Congeniality Award on RuPaul's Drag Race this year. Nina, you will always be number one in our hearts, and to demonstrate how much we mean that, we put up a 150-foot Nina West Art Makes Columbus banner, there it is, uh, on the side of the Key Bank building just a couple weeks ago. These are just a few examples of the incredible work Columbus creatives are doing every day. Today will also serve as a final thank you to the Harlem Renaissance celebration efforts. We have two nominees in the Columbus Make Art makes art awards recognized for their Harlem Renaissance programming, and we have a very special offer for all of you. To celebrate the incredible accomplishments of what became known as the Columbus Renaissance, we have produced, in conjunction with Warhol and Wall Street, this book. It's a 200-page hardcover book with stunning photographs that reflects, revives, and recognizes those efforts. It's our testament to that year-long celebration being just the beginning. The book is truly a look back to look forward. You can purchase it here today outside after the lunch for $40, which is $20 cheaper than you can buy it online. So just check in at the registration table out back. And I want to pause here and specifically thank Larry James, uh, Nanette Macy Junes, and Johan and Yogi Terrell for working on this project with us. One more notable event from 2019. This year, we celebrated the most successful arts festival ever with nearly 500,000 attendees down on the river. We had perfect weather, as you recall. We all know that the riverfront will keep evolving, but you can trust the Arts Fest. We'll keep adapting with it and keep our commitment to hosting more than 250 exhibiting artists, hundreds of performers, and great fun for people of all ages. Next year, the Arts Festival will be, will be almost 60. That actually happens in 2021. But we are celebrating anyways because our current presenting sponsor, the American Electric Power Foundation, just recommitted to five more years in that title role. <laughs> so
It's been a good year. Uh, that will make sure that we can keep the festival free and accessible for all. I hope you all join us June 12th through 14th next summer. We have so many more good things on the horizon for 2020, including new opportunities for artists and organizations. I'm not going to give all that away today, but I want you all to save the date of December 10th from 5.30 to 7.30 and join us for our, our annual public forum. We will be hosting it in the brand new Mitchell Hall at Columbus State Community College and you'll want to be there for all the great news we'll share. I must close with one more set of thank yous. Thank you to our Franklin County Commissioners. They were unable to join them, but when you see them, I want you to thank them. Com uh, Commission President Marilyn Brown, Commissioner Kevin Boyce, and Commissioner John O'Grady for the newly dedicated funds to the Arts Council that have enabled us to reopen our Artists in the Communities Grants and Boost Program for organizations. The deadline for that is next Friday, as well as provide the first round of sustainability funding to our organizations. I know the commissioners have a table with us here today. I think Ken Wilson, the county administrator, uh, may be with us, and I know there's senior staff members of the commissioners here with us today. So please join me in thanking the Franklin County Commissioners. <laughs> Your belief in the arts uh, make us a better city. If you can roll that back a little bit. Y'all can tell that I'm on a teleprompter up here, can't you? Yes. <laughs> I got a little bit ahead of myself there. We could not do the good work we do without the support of Mayor Ginther, City Council President Shannon Harden, and all of our City Council members. And I think we have six of the seven Council members here today, and I'm going to take a point of personal privilege and introduce all of them and ask them to stand. So uh, first, City Councilman Rob Dorans is right down here. City Councilwoman Shayla Favors. <laughs> City Councilman Emmanuel Remy, also the GCAC board member. <laughs> City Councilwoman Priscilla Tyson, also a GCAC board member, longtime GCAC board member. City Council President Pro Tem Elizabeth Brown. City Council President Shannon Harden. I also know that uh, Mitch Brown was not able to join us today, but we also have with us the Chief of Staff to City Council, Mike Brown, who is, where is Mike Brown? Somewhere, will you please stand? There you are, over that way. Thank you, Mike. And I also, looked out and I see that our city auditor Megan Kilgore is here. Megan, thank you for being with us today. <laughs> Megan has been incredibly helpful and her senior staff over the last several months to us here. So I also have to thank my board chair Michael Bongiorno, Angela Pace, Queen Angela. She's our MC and our advocacy and marketing chair for their leadership of the Arts Council and together with the entire Arts Council board and staff they are tireless in their support of this and all of our events. So let's get to the awards. Our presenting sponsor, PNC, has been a longtime supporter of this event. We have with us today their new regional president, Mary Auk, to help us present individual awards. Mary assumed the leadership role at PNC in August of this year, but she's been with the bank for 24 years in roles ranging from branch manager to managing director of PNC Capital Markets. She has deep roots in Columbus. She serves on the Executive Committee and Metropolitan Board of the YMCA of Central Ohio, as well as the Board of Experience Columbus. Mary is also a member of the Columbus Partnership and the Ohio Business Roundtable. Please welcome Mary out. Thank you, Tom. For the record, I was not offered a martini either, and those of you that know me know I would have said yes. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here today because we've seen firsthand how important arts programs are, not only to the children, but to the citizens in our city. 
PNC strives to give people of every age and background the opportunity to be part of the arts. We believe in the power of the arts to change lives, build community, and increase the economic vitality of Central Ohio. Since 2010, PNC's Arts Alive funded programs have extended the ability of the cultural community to be innovative and to provide hundreds of thousands of people. Our 10-year investments in the program has totaled more than three and a quarter million dollars into nearly 100 arts programs in the region. We know that PNC's corporate support, along with other businesses in our community, is incredibly important to the financial stability of our arts organizations. Together with the public sector support, the Arts Council has worked so hard to build. We have, we have the recipe for a thriving arts and cultural community accessible to all. It's that focus on education, access, and quality of life that truly brings value to our economy and to our people, our employees, our customers, and everyone who calls Central Ohio home. That's why I was delighted when the Arts Council asked me to present the individual awards today. Because without individuals working together to build a better community, none of us would be here today. I'm here to help celebrate our individual nominees and award winners for their commitment to the arts. Each winner will receive a piece of art desi by designer Celeste Malvar Stewart, who was incredibly thoughtful in creating these awards. All three were hand felted specifically for each recipient with natural materials, and each includes a unique pattern of sound waves from a plane taking off at the John Glenn International Airport. This is just part of Celeste's creative thinking, along with a frame that opens so you can touch the art if you like it. I encourage you to read more about Celeste and her creative process. It's found on page 18 in your event program. But now, on to the awards. After I recognize the nominees in each category, we'll see a short video about the winner. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but please hold your applause until after the video, and then I'll invite the winner to the podium. Let's begin with the award for an outstanding arts educator, a person, or persons in this case, who have made a significant contribution to making arts education opportunities available to students in K through 12, either within a school system or an after school program or activity. This award is presented in partnership with the Ohio Alliance for Arts Education. The nominees in this category are Betty Stoll, Zach Comston, and Tony and Aziza West. Tony and myself, we thought that we wanted to learn more about our culture and our heritage. You know, begin to study West African, and particularly drum and dance. And that's how we began. You gotta know yourself before you can help somebody else know themselves. The very first people that got us on our feet were at Battelle Memorial Institute. And I remember that was March the 4th, 1981. That's where we begin to use Tony West and the Imani dancers. We call ourselves African inspired. So we wanted to pass on the things that we begin to learn. And then try to do it in such a way that it tells a history and an involving and ongoing history of where we are, who we are, and where we're going. If we try to make it as spiritual as possible, which means that let's not forget those who came before us and the things that they went to. It's not who we are, it's who we represent. And so we stand on their shoulders. They, they taught me something really important back then that I didn't understand until I start running cross country, and that's just how to breathe. We had established a model, seriously, and the motto is educating as well as entertaining. To know a people normally is to know either their religion or their lifestyle. So the dances always pertain to their lifestyle. It is a piece of culture that we're able to share.
Tony and Aziza West's dedication to teaching arts and dance to young people through African culture has helped the children of our city discover a world of cultural enrichment and empowerment. Their contributions have strengthened the African American communities of Columbus and brought awareness to how African culture enriches all our lives. The sound waves represented in their award were chosen with the two of them in mind from the moment when the plane is in between acceleration and ascension, creating waves that connect two great sounds that continue together. Tony and Aziza, will you please join us on stage? By nurturing a creative environment, Columbus is giving rise to the next generation of artists and entrepreneurs who will shape our community. The Emerging Arts Leader Award is presented to an individual 40 years or younger who has had a significant positive effect on Central Ohio arts through their leadership, innovation, creativity, or investment. Our nominees in this category are Edward Kerrigan, Jessica Joseph, Betsy Pandora and Orle Alonso. Let's take a look at the video. Well, I was born in the short north. Uh, I grew up here in Columbus. I'm educated here in Columbus. I love Columbus. I actually started at Ohio State in uh, music performance. Um, and quickly transitioned to theater and arts administration because I discovered that I had a greater love of sharing uh, the talents of creative people um, than I did making uh, the art myself. And, um, and that's really oriented uh, the work that I do. Tell us about coming and just having fun dressing up and getting ready for Highball Halloween. Oh, the best part of Highball Halloween is getting to dress up. We have two public contests, public costume contests each night where you can enter to win prizes. I am so grateful to have Betsy in the leadership role because of the t critical time of taking the short north to an exciting neighborhood that had potential to a now nationally recognized neighborhood. When I think about our success as an area, a neighborhood, a distinct space in the city, and I think of success in general for Columbus, it's on its own terms, right? We shouldn't be um, trying to look off afar and, and emulating or copying things that are happening external to us. We should be striving and trying to develop the most authentic and interesting versions uh, of ourselves. That's what people love. That's what people actually experience when they come to Columbus. They're surprised that they find unique distinct here um, and that's what we do and that's what uh, I'm I, I think is probably the most uh, important thing for us to think about for our future. Art has the power to bring people together and I enjoy getting to play a role in, in helping to foster that. Uh, it's particularly meaningful to me to be able to do the work that I do being a hometown girl. Be the change you want to see. That's exactly what Betsy Pandora does. As an active member in arts education, innovation, and business planning in our community for years, Betsy applies her skills to help maintain and build upon the cultural significance of our premier arts district, the Short North. As the executive director of the Short North Alliance, 
Betsy has been a driving force in the revitalization and sustainability of the ever-evolving neighborhood. The sound waves represented in her award were chosen from that moment when the plane is up in the air, steadily rising, symbolizing growth and freedom of expression. Betsy, will you please join us on stage? Congratulations. Congratulations again to our award winner. Now I have the great honor of bringing the namesake of our next award to the stage. He is also the man whose leadership model and support for the arts laid the groundwork for much of what we celebrate in the arts in Columbus. While he was mayor, he was a tireless champion of the arts and a leader whose value are consistent with those at PNC. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael B. Coleman. Oh my goodness, what a great crowd. This is great, we're all here today to support the arts in Columbus and those who make it special. But this is a very special award today, uh, not just because it may be the most important award in the history of the universe. <laughs> that sounds like something Donald Trump would say. Uh, is that the, all the work that went behind to make, make what happened happen so important. So this is the final award presented to a civic community or business leader who's a role model. model. It honors support of the arts through significant contributions of time, talent, and or treasure. And, uh, and, and the nominees of the Michael B. Coleman Arts Partner Award are Haley Greenwald Dieter, Shannon Hardin, Jack Zoe Johnstone, Michael Reese, A.J. Vanderelli, and the winner is I have Ordinance 3378-2018 and Ordinance 3379-2018. We've been trying to get funding for the arts since the 80s. When Shannon came in as president, he made this a priority. Uh, he worked with his caucus and he delivered on a commitment to make Columbus competitive in the arts. I've been really proud that during my time as council president and with the amazing council team that we have, uh, that we were able to um, pass uh, the largest supports of the arts uh, in our city's history. Um, for the first time, we are dedicating a re new revenue stream uh, for uh, arts, both for the capital support, but also as for uh, operational and programmatic support. We have two funds, the Creativity and the Stability Fund, but really there is an overarching theme that I want everybody in the arts community to understand from this council, that by passing these ordinances, we are hoping and, and expect that the great diversity and inclusion that we see in our community is, is expressed through the support uh, and usage of these grants. Well, I think growth, opportunity, uh, education, entertainment in all its form, and we will truly have diversity within diversity. We believe, uh, and it, it was in our intention, for Columbus to put a stake in the ground and say, the arts and culture in this community is important to us, not just to us now, but to us uh, in the future, and who we uh, see ourselves as, and who we know uh, that we want to be, a community that values each and every one of us, and who uh, believes that culture is just as important as, uh, uh, to a city as anything else. 
we have a saying in city council that if it's not for all, it's not for us. Uh, and we needed to make sure that that also applied to the arts uh, here in Columbus. And we believe that through the work of this city council with our community partners, that we will have an arts and culture scene that will be for all of Columbus. Please call the roll. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes. Ordinances passes. Congratulations. Well, I just want to thank President Hardin and all of council and all of Columbus for a job well done that was long overdue. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just witnessed on the screen was an historic moment in the city of Columbus. It was a big deal, and it took leadership and courage of city council, every single member of city council, let me start off with Remy, Doran, Favor, and Brown, and Tyson, all of you, great leaders, a great team coming together to make this happen. But I want to have special acknowledgement to the leader of city council, because the president of council has the ability to make things happen or not make things happen. Here's a situation where President Hardin took this effort, embraced it, along with every other member of council, made it happen. And we are eternally grateful for your courage, your leadership to make funding of the arts for our children, our neighborhoods, and the growth of our city and the future of our city become real. Thank you, President Hardin. And now I'd like for you to come forward and achieve this uh, award. The sound waves, there's the sound waves. Here they are, sound waves. These sound waves. Well, these are sound waves. Come on over here. I want, I know he wants to say a few words, so go ahead. <laughs> I would just be remiss if I didn't um, thank everyone in this room, primarily my colleagues on city council who made this happen. Uh, the video says it, that we have a saying that if it's not for all, it's not for us. And that certainly has to be true of the great arts and culture community in Columbus. And because of the funding, because of our great partners uh, with the county, uh, Columbus is going to have and continue to have a strong arts and culture community. Thank you so much. And thank you very much to Mary and to Mayor Coleman. Mary, where are you, Mary? You ought to be up front somewhere because you're paying for this, right? Um, <laughs> next time, martinis, you and me, okay? And Mayor Coleman, you have an award named after you. You got a cocktail room and some bar named after you. You got a whole building named after you. But can you take a girl out for a drink? No. No. So yes, I, I'm drink shaming you right now in front of all these people. OK, Michael? All right, thank you very much. And congratulations to Tony and Aziza, to Betsy Pandora, and of course to Shannon. And I am proud to say that I know these folks. I have been fortunate over many, many years, Tony, many, many years to see Tony and Aziza and their troupe perform, teaching our babies how to dance and how to drum. I hope that Betsy thinks of me and my love of fashion and crowns the next time she thinks about which new clothing store to set up in the short north. 
And Shannon Harden, I, I have no words. I have known Shannon since he was a very young man, and I am so incredibly proud of the leader that he has become. And if I had brought my scepter instead of my martini glass, I would knight him right here. <laughs> Before we move on to our business awards, the next performance by Transit Arts was inspired by one of Amina Brendalyn Robinson's paintings, Sidewalks of Poindexter Village, Market Street. And the image was generously lent to us by the Columbus Museum of Art, thank you, Nanette. The mentor and youth artists were guided by Barbara Fant, Richard Duart Brown, and BHB in the creation of this spoken word, music, and dance performance called Market Street Comes Alive. Ladies and gentlemen, Transit Arts. Market Street carries laughter, air stuffed with skipping rope, steps of the people, people with hands, hands reaching, tasting, giving. Our neighborhood is full, like babies after lunch, fresh bread walks down the path, noses follow rhythmic steps and hands, joyous as afternoons, laughter lighting across labyrinths, using words instead of fists, gossip, buzzing through flowers, grandma mixing history into tonight's dinner that blooms from her hands, hands worn from carrying the joys and the pain of the streets, the street who gave birth to generations, the street that tells the stories of the hands trading, selling, clapping, hugging hands that make us come alive in the village of Market Street. <laughs> And one more round of applause for Transit Arts. And Jackie Calderon, I know you're in the house somewhere, but that's Jackie's group. She's been working with these kids for a long time and does a great, great job with them. And I used to be able to get down, pop and lock like that. But I slipped a disc just watching them just now. The city of Columbus is very, very, very lucky to have great leadership. We have leadership that actually gets it. And we've got those leaders in the house with us today. Now to help us present the business awards, please welcome to the stage again, Council President Shannon Harden and Council Members Priscilla Tyson and Emmanuel Remy. Would our fearless leaders please come to the stage.
Good afternoon. The Community Arts Partnership Awards honors businesses for their creative and innovative support to one or more local arts organizations. Today, Savalin, today's winners will receive an original piece of art by Columbus artists, which were on display in the pre-event space before the luncheon, and hopefully each of you had an opportunity to see the work. At Columbus City Council, we are extremely proud of the investment that the city makes in the arts to benefit our city's culture, economy, tourism, and families in all of our neighborhoods throughout Greater Columbus. I am honored to be able to further fulfill that role as a member on the Board of Trustees at the Greater Columbus Arts Council. It is now my pleasure to present the 2019 Small Business Award to a company with fewer than 50 employees. The nominees in the category are Alum and Arbor Tree Pre Preservation and Irving P Public Relations. And this year's Small Business Award goes to All I'm in the Arbor Tree Preservation. For the past year, Alum and the Arbor and Arbor have been busy transforming and preserving the landscapes of Central Ohio neighborhoods. And they have done it with, with a dedication, not just to the landscape, but also to the people and how they interact with our spaces. We are grateful for their generous time and effort in contributing to preservation in one of the most important public spaces in Columbus, the amazing Franklin Park Conservatory and Botanical Gardens. Alum and Arbor will receive Jackie Delaney's glass creation, Citrus Volume. Will Chris Alum please join me on stage to accept the award? Again, congratulations to Olive and the Arbor Tree Preservation. Good afternoon, Columbus. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to be with you here today, both as a representative of the city and as a newly appointed member of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Columbus Arts Council. To present the Medium of Business Award, of course, this award goes to businesses with between 51 and 500 employees for its consistent support of, of the arts in Columbus. The nominees in the Medium Business category are Casto, Graduate Hotel, and Orange Barrel Media. This year's Medium Business Award goes to <laughs> Casto. Casto's long-standing support for the arts has manifested itself through multifaceted partnerships with CAPA, the Columbus Museum of Art, and most recently, the Franklinton Neighborhood, which has resulted in their development of the River and Rich Project, providing new opportunities for residents, artists, and galleries. Casto will receive Edward Botang's black and white photograph titled Columbus Skyline. Will Brent Sobchak please join me on stage to accept this award?
I'm proud to join Council Members Tyson and Remy in presenting today's awards. Proud to uh, honor all of today's nominees and winners. I'm also humbled to be selected to be as the Michael B. Coleman Arts Partner Award winner, a man who has long been a mentor to me, my work to ensure that every uh, family and every child in this city uh, can experience the arts is a point of pride for me every day. I'm delighted to be here to see how those efforts are reinforced by this community. Now for the award in the large business category, this award is for companies with more than 500 employees. The nominees are Cover My Meds and State Auto. This year's large business award goes to Cover My Meds. <laughs> Cover My Meds support for arts organizations, community arts events and festivals, and particularly emerging festivals, has proven time and time again their commitment to the growth of arts in our community. Cover My Meds will receive the Syed uh, Adjujawal uh, painting, Hear My Harmonies. Here to accept the award is Cover My Meds, Mike Bukac. Will you uh, please join me on stage to accept this award? The entire. Did y'all see that too? Am I, uh, I don't know what y'all, what Cover My Meds does. I hope it's, I hope it's legal. But <laughs> I wanna work with y'all. <laughs> That's a party company right there. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, you're going out for martinis with me and Mary, okay? We're not gonna invite the mayor. We want to congratulate all our winners and all our nominees. We want to thank you so much for everything that you do for the community on the whole, but for the arts in particular. So can we have one more round of applause for that group of winners, please, our business winners. Okay, so y'all ready for this now? You are about to witness a pretty spectacular performance, but you should know that this is just a tease. What you're going to see is just a little snippet of an amazing piece of choreography by Ulysses Dove called Red Angels. And if you don't get enough of what you see up here today, then you can catch the entire performance, which is called Be Moved, in one of three more shows. That's tonight, tomorrow, or Saturday. I'm not doing anything either one of those days if y'all want to call. <laughs> so performing for us today are Ballet Met Company dancers Christy Latham and Leland Charles with Mary Rowell on the electric violin.
All right, that was pretty amazing. How about another round of applause for Christy, Leland, and Mary on the electric violin? Incredible. I can't wait to see the whole show. Now, I'm sharing a dressing room with Christy and Leland, and I don't mind that because, you know, I'm a benevolent queen, so it's okay. They've been stretching since 11 o'clock this morning. I mean, serious stretching. And that's okay, too. But what I have a problem with is they came out here with zero body fat. Now that's just not right. You see, I'm all covered up. <laughs> and they came out here in those, those, whatever those little things were and danced their butts off, what butts they have left. So, <laughs> so thank you very much to Christy, to Leland, and to Mary, and to Ballet Met for sharing that incredible piece with us. I think we all ought to go see the entire performance. Who's going? There you go. And now for our final presenter of the day, our new Greater Columbus Arts Council Chair, Michael Bongiorno. Now, I've had the pleasure of serving, so all those, those are all the people who work for Michael who just clapped there. I've had the pleasure of serving on the board with Michael for about seven years now, and I will tell you that this is a man who knows more than a little bit about innovation, about creativity, and about building beautiful things. He was the principal designer of our beautiful new wing to the Columbus Museum of Art, to Columbus State's new Mitchell Hall School of Culinary Arts, and the art-filled, and I have to say this name again, Michael B. Coleman Government Center, which is a beautiful, beautiful building. Michael reflects the kind of creativity and generosity of spirit that I see mirrored in so many of you in this room, people who truly love and support the arts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Greater Columbus Arts Council's brand new board chair and the daddy to the cutest little kid on Facebook, Michael Bongiorno, to present the Columbus Makes Art Excellence Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. How's everyone doing today? You guys having a great time? Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm delighted to be speaking to you today in my new role as chair of the Greater Columbus Arts Council Board of Trustees. In my work as an architect, I see every day how the arts impact our lives in ways large and small, from the more subtle cues found in the built environment to some of the, the intensity of the performances and stories we've all seen today. I'm truly honored that I can be but one thread in the cultural fabric of our great city. Before we present the awards and after the presentation of the checks, I would like to ask you to stay seated for just a moment for our final performance. 
I guarantee it will pick you up out of your seats and inspire you to go out there and continue all the great work that you do every day. Each year, the Arts Council nominates programs, performances, exhibitions, and cultural projects for the Columbus Makes Art Excellence Awards. These awards represent risk, innovation, and artistic excellence in programming. This year, there were eight extraordinary projects to review, and each member of the board had a lot of homework to do in reviewing and making the selections. We are blown away every year by the breadth of imagination and the creativity exhibited by those nominees. Thanks to the support of our friends at NG and L Brands Foundation, we'll present two awards today, $10,000 to an organization with a budget of under $1 million, and $10,000 to an organization with a budget of $1 million and over. It is my pleasure to present to you the 2019 Columbus Makes Art Excellence Award for an organization with a budget of under $1 million to Momentum for the Harlem Renaissance, Teach Them to Death. Monica Kreidler, can you please come up? Great job. Um, now for our nominees in the $1 million and over category, it is my pleasure to present the 2019 Columbus Makes Art Excellence Award for an organization with a budget of $1 million and over to Pro Musica Chamber Orchestra and Opera Columbus for The Flood. Pe Janet Chen and Peggy Dye, come on up. Please join me once again in congratulating Momentum, Pro Musica, and Opera Columbus on their award for Columbus Makes Art Excellence Awards. Each year, as we consider the incredible talent of the nominees and are humbled by your passion and talent, and we're honored that you call Columbus, Ohio your home. So thank you all to all the nominees. And thank you also to all of our sponsors, partners, and everyone in this room for your support and dedication to make the arts in Columbus accessible to everyone. Now, we have that extra special closing I was telling you about earlier. Um, as our final tribute to the Harlem Renaissance celebration, we're going to take you all to Tigerland. Please stand up, out of your seats. Come on, everybody, up, up, up. Get your hands together clapping and your feet stomping and give a rousing welcome to the East High School Marching Tiger Drum and Flag Corps. We'll see you all next year.